Hey guys, welcome back to Gem City Mastering. So I promise there are new DIY Mastering Console videos incoming, but it turns out that uh, electrical engineering is actually pretty difficult. And I've been doing um, a lot of reading, a lot of watching videos, a lot of math, a lot of learning, and very little doing. Uh, but I have captured some schematics. Um, I'm going to have some new P PCBs uh, manufactured. So there should be new videos incoming in the very near future, maybe in the next month or so. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I thought I'd do a video on my new oscilloscope. So this is my new scope. Um, it is a Siglent SDS 1104XE. It is a four channel 100 megahertz oscilloscope. Uh, it's one giga sample per second per ADC. So channels one and channel two share an ADC and channels three and channels four share an ADC. And so what that means is uh, if you're using one or two channels, you get one giga sample per second. If you're using, if you split up an ADC between two channels, each channel drops down to 500 mega samples per second. So that's worth knowing, but my primary use for uh, this scope is analog audio equipment. Um, so that's plenty good for anything in the audio domain. Uh, and also 100 megahertz is, is more than I uh, will ever need for any of the stuff that I'm currently working on. Now that's not to say future need might not arise, but um, for now this scope does everything that I need a scope to do. So why did I buy a new scope? I have a Siglent SDS 1102 CML. Uh, it is kind of their total entry level two channel uh, 100 megahertz oscilloscope. And it works fine uh, and I still have it and I have no intention of selling it. But uh, I had a couple gripes with it. Uh, first of all, though I don't need four channels, I can do everything I need with two. There are several there have been several points in time when I've been irritated that I only have two channels. So basically what I have to do is I have to move probes around a lot. Uh, whereas if I had four channels available, that wouldn't be a problem. Now I have a four channel scope, so that's not going to be a problem. Another reason I bought this scope is because this scope has significantly more powerful FFT functionality, and that's very useful in analog electronics. So I will demonstrate that here in just a moment. I guess the third reason uh, I bought this scope is uh, just a little bit of gear acquisition syndrome. One of the things that I don't um, like about my current scope is it's a really low resolution screen. It's something like 480 by 240 or something like that. So it's kind of chunky looking and it's just not very nice to look at. And those things actually matter, right? You want to enjoy using the equipment that you have. So um, this scope has like four times the resolution and it is gorgeous to look at. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really enjoying uh, just it, the text is all crisp. The traces look really nice. In fact, let's go ahead and put a signal up on the screen here. We've got a, a square wave there. I'll go ahead and switch this over to a sine wave. Maybe increase the size of that a touch. Um, the traces are really, really nice. Um, and the screen is just way nicer. It's the same size screen. They're both seven inch screens, but this is just way nicer to look at. So I suppose the next thing I can show you here is um, the FFT functionality, which I am very new to using. So, <laughs> Uh, I might kind of fumble around here. Also, I'm at a weird angle for it to have the camera where it is. So um, we'll see if I can get into this. So I want to put a square wave on the screen here and I want to be sampling quite a bit of that square wave. I think I had it set to 10 milliseconds previously. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and AC couple that signal. And uh, then we need to go into math, right? This should bring up our FFT. Oh, and it remembered. Okay, I just learned something about my scope. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to take this stuff off. Um, that's really cool that it remembered. It's even been through a power cycle. So I kind of rehearsed this beforehand. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I knew what menus had contained everything and I set it up for the signal. And as you can see, it has retained my settings, which is really cool. Um, 
So essentially what I wanted to do is show you this FFT. So we've got a square wave here. Uh, our time base is 10 milliseconds. So we're sampling a good, a good percent, a good long duration of this uh, square wave. And we've got um, an FFT here that is kind of basically covering the audio frequencies. So uh, this is our primary uh, one kilohertz signal right here. So there's, there's more down that direction, but we don't really need to see that. We're primarily concerned with the upper harmonics here. Um, and the, uh, the scale in this direction is uh, dB volts. Um, so frequency across this, uh, this uh, axis and, and dB volts on this axis. So what we're seeing here is the harmonic content of that square wave. Uh, square, square waves have a lot of harmonic content. And uh, it remembered everything, so you kind of got a little preview there of what I was going to show you. Um, if we go into tools and we tell it we want to identify the peaks, it's going to identify all of those peaks. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then we can show the table, right? Um, there we go. So that is showing us our amplitude at each of those peaks. But we can also show the frequency on that table. And in fact, um, I'm going to go in and get rid of the oscilloscope. This is another nice thing that you can do with this particular uh, model is you can do split screen, you can do full screen where you do an overlay, <coughs> or excuse me, you can do exclusive. So if I only want to look at the FFT, uh, I can just pull that up. But we'll go ahead and go back to split screen. And this is, so let me kind of explain, it, you know, if you know your way around analog electronics, you're going to know all of this. But, um, and I'm also very new and learning all of this stuff. So let me explain why this is important. Um, essentially, what this harmonic content would allow us to do is when I'm working on a, a circuit, that I'm designing for my mastering console. If I've got op amps or balance line receivers or balance line drivers or transformers or any of those kind of cool gadgetry for analog audio electronics, each of those um, devices has the potential to um, generate harmonic distortion. And a square wave is the perfect example of harmonic distortion because it's just filled with harmonic distortion. By contrast, I can switch over to a sine wave here. Um, I, I do believe I'm actually taking averages here, so I'm gonna set this to normal mode, and then um, all of that should disappear, right? So all of our harmonics have gone way down because I'm now sending it a sine wave. And that's another really cool tool that I was gonna show you. So we're gonna go back to the uh, square wave here, and I apologize, this video is a little scatterbrained. Um, but if we go back to the square wave and we see our harmonic content there, um, let's see, I kind of got lost here. If we go back to average, we can take samples of that waveform and average it. Now I've got it set to average 16 times. So it's currently showing us it's on four, five, six averages. And as it averages those samples, um, what you're going to see is this noise floor is going to even out and the harmonic content becomes much more apparent. So when we're taking measurements of um, you know, a particular circuit and we want to observe the harmonic content that it is creating, this is a feature that is really, really nice to have. Now, of course, if you have an audio interface and a computer, you can do all that stuff on a computer. You don't need a scope to do it. But that's really more for completed modules, completed devices, right? You do those total integrated measurements. The scope allows you to do it at the, very, at the individual component level, at the circuit level, while you're experimenting, while you're working on stuff. And it gives you a really good kind of idea of, you know, if you're creating distortion or anything. So this, is, this was a feature that is, um, uh, was very important to me my existing, my older scope has an FFT. It's, it's basically useless. Um, it'll display it. It doesn't really tell you anything. Whereas this has enough information to be really useful.
I suppose the last thing, um, let's go ahead and get out of the math function here and we'll change our time base back to something a little more reasonable. And uh, let's put an arbitrary wave font form up on the screen. Internal. That's kind of a cool looking waveform. So the other thing, uh, this might be a little out of, out of focus, but it's just a preview. I also got a new scope, a Bryman 869S that I ordered from Poland. Uh, and maybe I'll do a video on this uh, in the near future. So that's my scope. I hope this video was informative and interesting, and I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions or anything. And yeah, let's go ahead and turn on channel 3, 2, and put a signal on there. Just so we can have something fun to look at. So yeah, that's the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, DIY mastering console videos are incoming. So stick around for those. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.